Good afternoon. Uh, well, I wanted to start by introducing myself. I'm David Tucker. I'm a senior fellow at the Ashbrook Center. I know some of you, most of you I don't know, so I thought I would introduce myself. I hope we'll get a chance to uh, get better acquainted, talk about some things that have to do with what the Ashbrook Center is about. Um, but my principal purpose this afternoon is to introduce the guest speaker, Michael Fulber, as you can see behind me, is the executive director of the George Washington Institute for Religious Freedom. Um, prior to uh, that position, Michael was at the American Jewish Historical Society from 1991 to 2004. He was the director of research and also the executive director of the uh, society. And prior to that, I discovered talking to Michael this morning, he did a lot of work with police uh, about uh, the, the ethics of policing, which is uh, a very, uh, actually a very interesting topic and one I think doesn't get as much attention as it should. And I, we have, I discovered a common interest in this. It was interesting to talk to Michael about it. And he, he's written a book about it called Power and Restraint, The Moral Dimension of Police Work, which um, I intend to read. Uh, talk to Michael more about it. There's a quiz on Thursday. <laughs> uh, he's, he's most recently the editor of Washington's Rebuke to Bigotry, Reflections on Our First President's Letter to the Hebrew Congregation, which I, I hope you all have read. It's a wonderful <coughs> document. Um, in addition, he's, he's done some work in American history, um, uh, a book about um, uh, rioting in uh, Philadelphia and another one about writing more generally in uh, America, which is a, it's itself a very interesting topic. And so you, there is a connection there, the policing, um, the power, the use of power and restraint. Uh, but today his topic is uh, American Jews and religious liberty. And I thought I would, at Chris Burkett's encouragement, just take a, a minute to explain how uh, I first got to know Michael. The, the Ashbrook Center has a program called um, Religion in American History and Politics. And um, we got a grant from the George Washington Institute to do a seminar for high school teachers uh, based on Washington's letter, but also looking at some other uh, things, some Supreme Court cases and some other documents. And we were able to do this in Newport uh, and, and get a visit to the uh, synagogue there in, in Newport, which was uh, very impressive. It was a great experience. Michael. Uh, uh, participated in the seminar and uh, was it, it was uh, sometimes when you deal with organizations the people who run them don't uh, always participate in the seminars that they uh, have sponsored but Michael did and it was a great experience so that's how I first got to know him and then uh, the opportunity to have him out here a talk on that theme came up uh, and so we're uh, very happy to have him and I look forward to his talk Thank you. Thank you, David. Can everybody hear me? Is the microphone working? Good. Okay. Um, American Jews and religious liberty. We hear much of late about threats to religious liberty, to religious freedom, to religious groups, to religion itself, both in the United States and abroad. From the so-called war on Christmas, um, happy holidays, by the way, <laughs> to the mass killings in Paris and San Bernardino, to the beheadings of Christians, Jews, and Muslims in the Middle East, it seems that today holding the wrong religious belief can render you subject to anything from frustration and confusion to anger and even violent death. So threats to religious liberty are deadly serious. Through thousands of years of history, Jews know this as well as anyone. That's why Jews have a love affair with the United States. But before I say anything more about American Jews and religious liberty in particular, let me ask you something. And I would like my talk today to really be a conversation and not just, just a lecture. How do you find, how do you define religious liberty or religious freedom? What what do those term, What does that term, religious freedom or liberty, mean mean to you? And I'm going to stand here until somebody speaks. The first person who does gets a free copy of the book. Oh, 
Uh, religious liberty to me means that uh, you have the ability to practice your religion openly without interference from the government, without fear of reprisal for your religious beliefs. Reprisal from whom? From the government or from other forces. Okay, so it's freedom of worship. <laughs> and freedom, freedom to practice. What do you mean, practice? Freedom to, to do what your religious convictions uh, require you to do, and not that you shouldn't be forced to do something that you find objectionable. You're yes. free to take your religion outside of the place of worship. That you you aren't restricted in your worship to a church or a synagogue. You can actually practice your religion in public. Uh, can you practice it at a nuclear power plant? Would that be public? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> Anybody see it differently? Is that so it's basically freedom to, okay. I would just uh, amend it to say that um, religious liberty doesn't go so far as to allow someone to violate the, the rule of law. And uh, well, I, I, I think that even in our society we can have religious liberty without requiring that uh, every tenet of every faith um, must be permitted to uh, be practiced if those would violate the rights of others uh, or if they would infringe on, on the yeah, if they would infringe on the rights of others in society. Uh, and so it's the freedom freedom to practice so long as your religion does not contradict the, the rule of law and the fundamental principles of our country. So human sacrifice is not a permitted form of worship. That's correct. Okay. Okay. What I would like to argue is that what we just touched on are the three points that I think comprise the different levels of meaning of religious liberty or freedom, which is that there's freedom of religion, freedom for religion, which is, in my view, different, and freedom from religion. And before I say anything about how these three categories apply to the Jewish experience in, in America, uh, let me say a little bit about the, each of these differences. And if you don't agree, Raise your hand. For me, freedom of religion implies the freedom to hold a personal religious belief or faith. Freedom of faith is personal. It need not be approved by anyone else. It also means freedom of belief for members of a group and not just for a person, members of faith as a whole. Freedom of belief or conscience inherently includes your freedom to attend a house of worship of your choosing, to perform the rituals and fulfillment fulfill the commandments of your faith, so long as these are done in a law-abiding and peaceful manner, as you said. You can wear ashes to work on Ash Wednesday, you can wear a kippah to the office, and as of late, you can even wear one as part of your military uniform. Um, uh, you can now wear a beard if your faith calls upon that, where um, that was forbidden in the military until recently. You can wear a hijab to the supermarket or to a university classroom, which you can't in France. You can request a kosher or halal meal at the United States Military Academy and get one. So it's the freedom to express your personal faith in worship and in practice. By contrast, I think that individuals and groups that seek freedom for religion or making a different, more assertive claim closer to what you were alluding to. And freedom for religion implies freedom to advocate for employing a particular religion or religious or set of religious values as the basis for law, public policy, national observance. It implies a right to proselytize others to convert them to your particular religion.